Have cryptocurrencies finally grown up? Cryptocurrencies have got a bad rep over the years, from high volatility that's seen prices drop by 80% or more, through claims that they've been used for money laundering and drug deals, to investors losing access to their funds because exchanges got hacked or became accessible. Why is it that they haven't disappeared from the investment universe? And have they finally outgrown their uncertain beginnings to warrant a place in the mainstream portfolio? What was the biggest problem for cryptocurrencies? Back in 2016, when Bitcoin and other digital assets burst into popular consciousness as they broke to record highs, investing in them took a fair bit of determination, some big leaps of faith or even technical savvy. Either the buyer had to send money to a largely unregulated exchange, often with an offshore bank account in a tax haven, or they had to set up wallets on their own computers and take responsibility for safeguarding their own holdings. In both cases, this led to big losses, such as when the 30-year-old founder of Quadringa died, taking his exchange wallet password to his grave and losing his investors $135 million. So what's changed? Today, we're looking at a whole new landscape. Custody has largely been sorted, Retail investors in the US can buy Bitcoin directly via their PayPal accounts. That means they never have to store the assets on their local computer, and they can leave the money with a name they know. Similar moves have happened elsewhere with Revolut in the UK offering similar services, and MasterCard indicating it's willing to get into the game. But what about institutional investors? Institutional investors like pension funds, hedge funds and broad money managers have different needs than retail customers. They want a futures and options market where they can lay off risk. And they want deep liquidity so that they can trade in size. And they want a clearinghouse to stand as a trusted counterparty. And these things have started to emerge. CME Group, which operates one of the largest derivative exchanges, trading everything from gold to FX to interest rate products, have one of the more established Bitcoin product portfolios. Others are working on ETFs. And together that's removed some of the Wild West from the cryptocurrencies. So does that mean the end for the old cryptocurrency exchanges? Probably not. Binance, Coinbase and Kraken have gone from strength to strength, adding more staff throughout the pandemic. They're trading billions of dollars in volume on a daily basis and look set to remain the home of the hardcore crypto enthusiast. They also still the main point of price discovery as a flash crash on Kraken proved recently. So everyone should put Bitcoin in their pension funds? Not so fast. Even if the custody has been sorted, this asset class remains extremely volatile. Yes, it's capable of explosive upside, but history shows it's also capable of catastrophic collapses. And that alone makes it unsuitable for most investors beyond some fractional allocation. But at least now, if investors do decide to take a position, they can do so without the fear of getting scammed. I'm Eddie van der Walt. For more on the world of cryptocurrencies, follow us on QuickTake and Bloomberg. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg QuickTake now for insight in an instant.